All right, so we're checking out another power station in this video. This is the All Powers S1500. So this has a capacity of 1,092 watt hours and comes in at about 22 pounds or about 10 kilograms. And they're claiming this is uh, the lightest and smallest uh, 1,000 watt hour power station on the market. I'm not 100% sure if that's an accurate claim, but uh, I haven't seen any other power stations in this capacity at this weight level. Not a whole lot that comes in the box. You get the power station, of course, and you get this um, carrying pouch that holds the charging, the wall charger. So if you want to charge the power station, you need this. And this is a uh, 30 volt, 10 amp charger. It has a 55, I think this is a 5521 barrel connector. And you just charge it here on the side here. This is the input. This is your Anderson connector for solar panels. And then this is your 12 volt cigarette lighter output if you want to, uh, if you have uh, devices that charge off of a cigarette lighter adapter. Not a whole lot going on here in the front. You got your four AC outlets. And uh, this has a 1500 watt inverter in there that will burst to 3000 watts. So Obviously big capacity, big inverter, so this is going to be pretty useful for your a lot of, in a lot of different situations, you know, indoors, outdoors, camping, etc. A couple of LED lights here in the front. You can turn one on here or this one on this side with pretty bright. I think they're three watts each. This is your little um, on-off button. Also the Bluetooth icon is activated. I have this connected to my smartphone right now. There is a uh, QR code in the manual, one for Apple, one for Android, for their app, and I'll show you how that works. Basically, it, if you have this like under a desk or something, and you don't want to necessarily have to look down at the display here, you can connect to it with your smartphone or using the smartphone app and get all the relevant information as well as turn things on and off. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, button here to turn the DC section on and off which is going to be here on the right side. And so we have our uh, three USB-A ports and one USB-C power delivery port. And then you have two 5525 barrel connector ports here on the side. And of course you have your ventilation uh, vents here on the side here. There's nothing in the back or on the bottom. And it's a nice little square size. Um, and of course the handle comes up. Very, uh, very easy and portable. It does have these little indentations here in the top, so you can stack a couple of these if you have. To, if you happen to buy a couple of these, you can stack them together. All right, so just a uh, quick look at the manual, and it just just shows you some of the stuff I've already talked about, the ventilation ports and what each of the ports are. And I don't remember all the specs and the numbers, so let me find that. So there's some information regarding solar charging, 300 watts max on that. Uh, Anderson port and also you can also charge this via your car uh, via a 12 volt source and that's up to 300 watts max. Uh, it does not come with the uh, cigarette lighter adapter. You have to source that separately. And here are the uh, referenced uh, charging times from empty for, uh, via the different methods. So obviously AC wall charger is going to be 300 watts input three to four hours. Same for the car. You can also charge via USB-C and 100 watts input, so that USB-C port on the side is input and output, but it's a little bit less, of course, so 9 to 10 hours. Uh, you can do a combination of the AC wall adapter plus the USB-C charger, and that is 400 watts max, so that's going to be the shortest charge time to 2 to 3 hours. And here's some additional specs. The capacity, uh, 295,200 milliamp hours or 1,092 watt hours. Here's the weight and also the different current inputs. Additional specs here on the back for the different ports, temperature range, and also notes that it says different protections there over current, under voltage, over voltage, under voltage, over voltage, overload, short circuit, overheating protection. Okay, quick little demo here uh, using the USB C port here on the side. And we're charging up our phone here. I think it's at 15 or 16 watts. And we show it on our display here. DC section is on, Type-C port is active, USB is active. It has a little um, readout here on how much 
power on time is available at this current uh, draw, so at 1415 watts. This power station at 83% will last another 40 hours and 9 minutes. And there's just a little a Bluetooth icon means it's connected to my phone here. Let me go ahead and show you where that is. Alright, so here is the app. The link is the QR code that's in the manual. So it shows you your capacity, remaining time, uh, 40 hours, and then uh, which is uh, translated to one, one day and 16 hours. And the same readout here, output of 15 watts. It's also, you can see on the the front display, it just duplicates that and just puts it in the app. And then you can actually turn on the different sections here. Instead of using the buttons, you can use the um, little sliders here on the on the app. DC 12 volt USB is the DC section, and then you have your AC section here, currently turned off. And you can also turn the little LED lights in the front on and off with this little slider here. You can see they both turn on with that. But that's pretty much it for the app. Now, when you go out of the app here, it does try and get you to log into your Google or Facebook account, Facebook account or whatever. I don't actually like any of this stuff. So I'm not really sure. I mean, I didn't pop this up when I first launched it. So if you end up going back out and then open the app again, it does make you reconnect to the device. And then it'll detect that via Bluetooth. So you're able to get back into the app without having to log in. But I don't like the fact that it uh, has a that option there. I would just, you know, ignore that or try and get out of it. And then if you quit the app and relaunch it, it doesn't look like it asks you for that at the beginning, but uh, when you exit the app. So yeah, it's kind of a weird thing, but yeah, it's something to note about this app. All right, so regarding testing of the AC ports here, I decided to go a little bit different route here. I'm um, going to be using this uh, steamer pot here, which is actually a pretty useful steamer pot if you need to like cook noodles or whatever, or steam buns if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, this is pretty good for cooking stuff when you're camping with, when, when using for these kind of power stations. So I'm going to use this for future videos as well as a reference point. This is, a, um, this is rated up to 600 watts of power usage. Um, however, when I was actually using it on this power station to cook some stuff, it, it says like setting, a setting here for 20 minutes for cooking some, basically it's like a quick cook setting. So it runs for 20 minutes. It On here it was saying it was drawing about 423 watts for that, you know, roughly 20 minutes or about a third of an hour. And at the end of the day, it went from 99% of capacity to 83% capacity in that 20 minutes. So you used about 16% of the capacity of the power station, which is a roughly 175 watt hours, according to the display. Um, but according to the, also according to the display, it was, if it's using 423 watts over 20 minutes, that's 141 watt hours. So obviously there's um, some efficiency losses that are going on inside with the inverter. You can do the math there between 141 watt hours and 175 watt hours. There's a little bit of overhead in terms of what is actually being used by the device. And in this case, this steamer pot, 141 watt hours versus what is actually uh, being drained out of the power station, 175 watt hours. So this is a pretty uh, standard test I can do because this thing runs as a 20 minute timer on here. It runs for 20 minutes and it has a constant draw. So I'll feature this in future videos and we'll see how other power stations compare in terms of how much capacity is being drawn by this particular device over 20 minutes. And a couple of last things to note, it does have a five year warranty on this power station. It is UL certified, so um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys are looking for that and there's not as many of these power stations that are UL certified as one of them. Um, that's going to pretty much cover everything of this power station. There's a link to uh, the other power stations I reviewed down in the video description as well. You'll see a playlist of other videos if you want to see how this one compares to the other ones. This one's currently $900 on Amazon with a $200 coupon. So if you were to link, that's what'll be there. But of course that stuff changes day to day. So, you know, the pricing games on Amazon are such that could be different by the time you watch this video sometime in the future. So be, you know, note that uh, it may be more or less depending upon when you're watching this video and when you click the link. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button down below. That's gonna do it for this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.